Hello everyone. Welcome to uh, the session on UiPath Autopilot for testers. So we will be more uh, deep diving into UiPath Autopilot capabilities in terms of uh, test suite capabilities of uh, what actually we can achieve with the help of Autopilot in uh, UiPath test suite. So myself, Patrudu Chintakaila, I'm working as an associate architect in Edge Technologies. And I have total 10 years of experience in IT and uh, relevant to UiPath is close to more than seven years. So I work on UiPath specifically on almost all the products and you are, I was awarded with UiPath MVP for 2024 in the category of UiPath test suite. And also I'm UiPath active community speaker and also leads the Wizard chapter. And uh, when it comes to the certifications, uh, I completed advanced developer, solution architect and test automation engineer and especially test automation engineer way I completed my certification within a week of the release of the exam and specialized AI associate. And I run my own YouTube channel and you can uh, go through the YouTube videos in Skill RPA YouTube channel as well. And as end of our today's session is we will uh, touch the test suite at a very high level, what actually the components of your iPad test suite and how it is. Um, what are the different components of it and how the integration between one component to the other component will happen. And also we will look at the core pillars of uh, autopilot. What are the different pillars we have in autopilot and we will see the advantages of autopilot and we will deep dive more into AI powered uh, requirement evaluation and test case generation and the code generation as well. And also we will look at the test data generation. And we will uh, touch base the prompt libraries because the prompts are the basic or pillars for any uh, AI, Gen AI capabilities. Uh, so we will touch base the prompt libraries, how we can use it and how we can define a new prompts and all. And also we will look at the governance of autopilot because uh, when it comes to the Gen AI capabilities or generative AI, when we are talking about when we are dealing with the cloud, security actually plays a major role so we will look at what are the different governance the ui path is offering for that and also we will look at the best practices uh, when we are uh, implementing autopilot and we will see the live demo and uh, we'll be jumping into uh, our uh, session uh, of, of our deep diving or ui path test suite uh, autopilot and first uh, the test suite architecture architecture looks like uh, we have a lifecycle connectors available, like where the application lifecycle will be handled. Uh, kind of uh, the ALM tools, you can uh, consider either Azure DevOps or a Jira or SAP Solutions Management. So where we have all the requirements and our user stories will be uh, residing. And we have a UiPath Test Manager Connect, which will connect to UiPath Test Manager, where the to and fro of uh, artifacts will be flowing between the ALM and the Test Manager. And the test manager is integrated with UiPath Studio and UiPath Orchestrator. And whereas like UiPath Studio is utilized for developing your automation scripts for testing and UiPath Orchestrator is to manage all your robots and um, integration with the CI. And when it comes to the UiPath Studio, major thing is uh, the people will be saying that like, I already have some code already available for me, which I have built on Selenium or in a robot robot framework so even so can be uh, invoked in the UiPath studio for better reusability if you already have some uh, test cases available and if you want to build new test cases even these also can be executed from uh, or uh, invoked or uh, uh, called from the UiPath studio and the UiPath orchestrator connects to the UiPath robot whatever the execution happens your test cases the test results will be flowing to the test manager through UiPath orchestrator and UiPath Orchestrator has an extensive API exposed. Uh, so the CI CD, uh, continuous integration and continuous environment will happen uh, through uh, triggering your test set through Azure pipelines or a Jenkins or a Git actions as well. So this is a very uh, architecture of UiPath test suite. And the core pillars of autopilot. So there are four core pillars when it comes to the autopilot for UI, uh, UiPath test suite or testers. So the UiPath uh, test manager where we will be having uh, AI powered evaluation and AI powered generation. 
So AI power evaluation is to evaluate your requirements quality and also to improve your quality of AI, uh, your requirements, whatever we have given there. Like, uh, let us assume that you're in Jira and like user stories you'll be creating uh, for any application development and those will be linked to your UI power test manager requirements and we can evaluate the user stories and we can even improve the quality of the requirements for the test case to be generated. And AI powered generation is generating the manual test cases from the requirements. So different steps involved in order to create your, uh, perform your testing. So it will be generating the manual test case. Nothing but it is a step-by-step -step description of how your test cases to be tested or test cases uh, will be defined based on your requirements. And AI powered automation is in the UiPath Studio where we will be, it will be generating your code automations or based on cases manually generated in the test manager. So we will be linking this test manager and UiPath Studio in order to get these test, uh, test cases, whatever is generated in the test manager to reflect in your studio. And from there we can generate our code automations or low code automations. And UiPath uh, AI powered insights where the UiPath insights, uh, AI powered insights will help you to identify or get the real time uh, <coughs> insights into your test results. Based on your test results, it will suggest the error patterns and common errors. And also it can recommend and we will see that in uh, as part of our demo as well. And what are the advantages of uh, autopilot for the testers. The first advantage is uh, evaluating the requirements in terms of quality and clarity and what are the different uh, acceptance criteria and we will be, uh, it will be evaluating and it will suggest you to change in case if something needs to be fine tuned and it is up to us whether to consider or not to consider and generate detailed manual test cases from the requirements. So based on the requirements, once we evaluate the requirements and when we fine tune the requirements, then we can generate the detailed manual test cases. Manual test cases is nothing but the manual test steps for each of the test case, right? <clears throat> and it will be generating that and converting the manual test cases to automated test cases. And uh, by uh, leveraging the AI autopilot, we will be generating your coded scripts based on the test steps given by the uh, autopilot and generating synthetic data, which is like automated test case test data generation. And also it uses the capabilities of Gen AI in order to generate the test data. And also we can see the actionable insights. When I say actionable insights, it's not only showing us what actually went wrong. It also suggests what to be done, what, what might be the possible fix as well. And why autopilot is there? See, uh, we can even write our test cases manually and we can even code out because we have a low code platform. It will not take much time for us to do the coding as well for the automation script, but it will improve the productivity and it will uh, reduce your testing life cycle time. Right. And it also significantly uh, addresses the any uh, major pain points. Major pain points is nothing but like the test coverage of our scenarios. See, if you consider a boundary value testing or end-to-end -end testing or functional testing, there might be a possibility that we will be missing out some scenarios, right? So, but it will uh, cover almost all the scenarios based on the prompts we are giving and the type of testing we are performing. And who can use the autopilot? Everyone can use the autopilot, like developers, testers, and citizen developers, because there is uh, almost all the platforms are integrated with autopilot. And it is more benefits for uh, juniors or whoever is started with their uh, less experienced testers, whoever started with their career, and who is not that much expert. right? And in case if someone is coming from a non-testing background, and if they're doing the testing. And for example, if you consider a majority uh, of our RPA developers initially came from the testing background, automation testing background. But now uh, whoever is directly came to the RPA testing in UiPath test suite, because in your, when you are doing a testing with UiPath test suite, you need to have the knowledge of both testing and also the UiPath product suite knowledge. So there might be a shortage in terms of testing for a developers who is actually came from the .NET background to the UiPath. 
so there will be some slight gap or like maybe they are uh, well versed with the testing but uh, when covering the test scenarios there might be a gap so this will help uh, each and every one to enhance their productivity and also uh, easy to uh, generate your test cases and also it improves the testing speed and the quality quality in the sense it is co covering it's more about the test coverage so ai powered evaluation so when it comes to the ai powered evaluation when we ha already have the requirements uh, in place in the ui power test manager so it will improve uh, the analyzes the requirement uh, whether it is a relevance and also whether it is a consistency and whether we are covered each and every requirement or acceptance criteria or how to be tested and all these details right and it will enhance the precision so that like we can easily generate the test cases and it suggests uh, covering all the flow of in terms of security performance and the compliance as well and when it, security assessment or a performance a performance evaluation is based on the scalability and efficiency of what we are ex expecting in terms of application and when it comes to the security assessment uh, we will be having a couple of more documents we can attach along with your ai along with the requirements so we can provide the supporting documents to uh, our ui per test manager autopilot so that it will make our requirement more consistent in guidelines with your security and compliance so it focuses more on uh, encryption of the data or like in in case of your uh, access controls and all this will be taken care of uh, with the ai powered evaluation in case if we miss out something in terms of our requirement when we are writing it right and ai powered generation so we need to be uh, more precise about what actually we are trying to do so what is the purpose of the requirement and what is the application logic and what is the acceptance criteria so these three um, plays a major role when we are generating the test cases so we need to be very precise specific and clear with our requirements so that like relevant test cases will be generated and also we need to focus more on the actual uh, benefit of the end user so what actually uh, our requirement is and we need to be very uh, precise about the requirement of that particular component or a story what we are trying to test and application logic uh, we need to write a detailed steps so that like autopilot will understand that and it will generate our test cases in terms of uh, what operations we are going to perform and what are the different uh, sequential way we need to define it and acceptance criteria in what scenarios my test case is going to be passed and in what scenarios it should be failed so we need to have a valid and acceptance criteria to be defined both it should include both positive and negative scenarios and non functional scenarios as well and also we should have an uh, uh, concrete input inputs and the expected outcomes to uh, establish the performance benchmarks in case if we are trying to go with uh, let us assume that like there is a login page and you are expecting the login page to uh, uh, load in net just 10 seconds right so we can just put that like the login page should be loaded within uh, 10 seconds so it will uh, check whether it is expected like as expected it is getting updated uh, loading at a uh, 10 seconds less than 10 seconds or not if it is crossing beyond that time then it will be failed criteria so we need to define our acceptance of our test cases it's irrespective of whether it's a functional or a non functional scenarios and ai powered automation so when the autopilot is generating your code based on your test cases so uh, in terms of ui automation uh, there is some specific considerations we need to do when we are trying to utilize the autopilot is because when you are dealing with the ui automation you need to be creating your object repository manually and when we are creating our object repository we need to have a proper naming convention for your ui objects so that it we need to have a consistent and proper meaningful naming conventions where our steps whatever we are defining should match with our object repository naming conventions so that like it can directly consume the existing object repositories or else it will be additional effort for us to in order to configure the object repositories as part of our generated code it will still generate the code 
but it will not take the object objects whatever the ui objects we have that in the target application they, those will not be considered properly so we need to be very careful when we are <coughs> preparing the object repository and also in terms of manual steps we need to have a proper uh, actions uh, what it needs to be performed and also we need to consider what is the different activities we have in ui path so uh, we have type activity or get text activity so we have a get text activity in ui path but in case if you are just writing that like uh, get uh, all the text whatever is available or uh, instead of that like uh, in case if we are writing scrap the values or get values instead of that like we need to use the get text in the <clears throat> specific result message or something so in that way we need to be more uh, standardized our manual steps like considering what different activities we have in ui path though we are leveraging the autopilot there are some best practices we need to follow in order to do that let us assume that you are automating a, an a te test scenario where you may need to fill the data into a form up form kind of ui application so in that as well like we need to use the keywords of properly naming convention so that like that will helpful for the autopilot to generate it even if we are not using properly it will generate code but again we need it requires a manual intervention to validate the code and make some changes or minor changes to it so we need to be very careful when we are preparing our object repository or when we are evaluating our manual test steps whatever it created as well so everything starts from our requirement and in case if our requirement is very precise and concise then all of our autopilot or testing journey for the autopilot will be very seamless so test data generation so even the autopilot we have for the capabilities of test data generation as well and previous previous to that like we have the test data generation available but when the autopilot comes into the picture like uh, the gen ai capabilities based on gen ai capabilities the test data generation also possible so here uh, in order to generate our test data we need to have the arguments created instead of our uh, variables when we are building our test cases we will be creating some variables to pass in the data for data driven testing right so in that scenarios instead of using variables we will be creating an argument so that based in, on these arguments the test cases when we are using this data generation it will generate the data and also we can even uh, customize the data generation because whenever we are dealing with autopilot it is all about the prompts what we are giving so we can even customize and try the different data types combinations also based on our prompt only so it is kind of like uh, whatever the prompt we are giving that actually matters for the test data to be generated let us assume uh, we are generating uh, a test data where we need to pass in the address and there might be a requirement that you need to pass in the address for only us right so we need to generate the test data considering i want to have a test data generated for us region or like for any specific city or your prompt should be like uh, i need in a complete uh, address like where we will be having street number street address uh, street name uh, city or uh, state and country or postal code so we need to give that prompt in such a way that like it will uh, automatically generates your data and prompt library so in ui path tester there is already a prompt library available and a couple of already some prompts are already predefined under the project settings and we can go through that uh, prompt each of the prompts and we can even modify the existing prompts or we can even add a new prompts also so let us assume that like there is a valid e2e scenario testing so there is already a prompt is already by default we will be having and we can even modify it and what is the advantage of it whenever we are generating the test cases test scenarios from the requirements it's not necessary for us to write the prompt every time because when we are generating the test cases we need to write the prompts there so instead of like writing the prompts there we can directly pull up these uh, existing pro uh, prompts under the prompt library and we can leverage them in order to generate our test cases or test scenarios and ai powered insights so when we are executing our test cases 
uh, let us assume if you are running only 10, 10 test scenarios or something, it is very easy for us to analyze our test results and we can Im immediately come up with what is the, uh, which test cases are failing frequently and which test cases are, uh, what is the recommend, what we can do in order to make it uh, successful and all. Let us assume you are working on a very uh, vast uh, large scale projects and uh, you deployed almost 100 test cases. And it will be very hard for someone to analyze the results and get the meaningful insights out of it. So what this AI powered insights will do is it has a gen AI capabilities where it will identify the common errors. So it will be grouping off all of your test cases based on the error patterns. It, it can be based on some uh, specific uh, error types or most frequently failing test cases. So it will be identifying most common errors and the error patterns out of it. And also based on these two, it can even provide actionable recommendations to improve our test uh, execution success, right? So it is uh, kind of like, let us assume that like your one specific test case is failing all the time with a selector issue. So it will provide you the recommendation that in case if you are going to fix this selector, there is a high possibility that your test cases can go through uh, successfully. So all these recommendations are provided with the help of Gen AI capabilities. And what about the security? When we are talking about Gen AI or uh, generative AI or autopilot, the security actually matters a lot. So UiPath introduced a centralized governance under the automation ops where we can even leverage this autopilot security as well, which will, which will be part of AI trust layer. And we can uh, enable or disable a couple of uh, features like uh, whether it to, to integrate with third party or enable uh, test manager features and all these things. So this can be managed from the automation ops at the centralized governance perspective. So what are the different best practices we have in order to implement our autopilot? So as we discussed, we need to be very concise about our uh, requirements and comprehensive. It needs to explain what actually you are talking about. And you need to define the application logic and what are the different steps flow it follows and what are the different acceptance criteria in case if you have any uh, exceptions expected or what are the different conditions we have. And all these we need to define it properly when it comes to the requirements. And we have an option to upload the documents and which supports uh, document files, word for word documents, Excel files, text, and JPG photo pictures and PDF and BPNM. BPMN is nothing but the flow diagrams uh, we have. So, so these will help us in order to uh, improve our uh, requirements and the test cases to cover when we say the supporting documents right like more of a security documents or what are the different in case as it's not part of our requirements and we need to consider those uh, conditions as well like uh, compliance requirements or security features and all so those documents will be considered <coughs> while generating it and okay. autopilot uh, as of now it is a bit limited to 128000 tokens uh, which is almost like close to 96,000 uh, words. Like we need to be make sure that like our requirement and the supporting documents, whatever we are passing should not cross these limitations as of now. There might be a possibility that there will, they may increase the number of tokens, but we need to be very concise. And it is very good number uh, compared to the other open AI models or something. Um, but uh, so we need to be very careful in that. And when uh, you are generating the test cases, uh, by default test scenarios, by default it will generate 10 test scenarios, or we can even give the number and the maximum limit is 50 test cases at a time for a requirement. So this is how uh, the limitation we have as of now for the autopilot and maybe it can be increased going further, but as of now, that is the maximum uh, we have. So these are the couple of best practices or points we, knew, we should know before we are using autopilot. So we will go into the UiPath test manager and uh, so in order to generate our test cases.
so hope everyone uh, like uh, i i i'm assuming that like you might be already aware of like how to enable the test manager but still i can just simply go to the admin and under the tenant where you want to have under the services we just need to add the services because i already have all the services available for me so i have all this uh, already available if not we will be having a button here add services but as of now i don't have i have only refresh because i already have all each and every service what we have in ui path to my uh, tenant so uh, under the tenant we will be adding that services and once you have the test manager added and enabled so it should not be in the disabled mode so it is enabled now in case if it is disabled we will be looking uh, it looks like this and there will be an option to enable so once we have done this we can see our test manager here so this is going to be our test manager and we can create a new project from here and uh, also we can import the existing so i already have one uh, autopilot playground so i'm just opening this project and if we go to the project settings the user access management will be at the project level it's not about the tenant level so whoever is the project owner and the org admin will have admin of administrator will have the access to the projects so and in case if someone needs to be added we can add and we can even transfer the ownership and when we go to the prompt library see here here we already have a couple of prompts already by default defined and we can go to any of the prompts and we can even customize the prompts based on our requirement we can even modify these prompts and also we can uh, select the mode of the use as well so here we have like uh, requirement quality and test cases generation so th these are the three different modes of use we have and if we come here we can even create a new prompt so we can simply use select whatever uh, our uh, requirement is as when we are generating uh, uh, giving the prompts so the prompts are for three uh, scenarios we have one is uh, generating the test cases from the requirement and from the sap transaction uh, when you are working with the SAP testing and SAP heat map solutions management, this will be a second uh, option will be helpful. And for your evaluation of your requirement, the third will, we will be using it. And we can define the prompt name and we can give uh, all the prompts, whatever is required for us. And also, why do we need to have this uh, prompts uh, predefined, prompt library predefined? So that we will be looking at when uh, we are uh, utilizing the prompt autopilot now so i'm going to create loan request uh, requirement and here if you see right like i'm just having very uh, simple requirement here and i can even write the acceptance criteria and all so let me go submit loan request if you see the submit loan request it is giving uh, us the requirement and also user flow each and every step or uh, how it follows the requirement and acceptance criteria in which, which scenarios the test case the loan should be accepted and loan should be rejected so based on this we can generate the test cases so we already have the test cases here so i'm just coming back and i'm coming to this so where we doesn't have any test cases so we are just uh, uh, will be using the evaluate quality so in terms of evaluation of a requirements we will be using this evaluate quality and when we clicked on it like it is we have a couple of uh, documents here uh, so we can just simply select any of the documents or even we can upload a new document also so let me uh, try to download this and see see here we have the terms uh, like we will be having appendix or like uh, the glossary of terms right like when we have the short forms what is the full form of each of the words so based on our require applications and requirements we are using right so this actually uh, gives that uh, glossary and security guidelines if i download the security guidelines this is more of your application security authentication and all these things like when we have strong policies which means like your password should have uh, the numeric and higher uppercase lowercase and special characters so all these will be considered when we are generating the test case uh, test cases but only if we select this only if we select these options then only it will work so i'm just simply going with ui bank create loan request and i'm just clicking on next and here the prompt library is going to help you so when you select 
what is the uh, type of uh, prompt you want to have so what you want to evaluate like is it user flow consistency and all or only it is about the performance and security assessment so here i want to go with multi faced audit so i can simply go and uh, evaluate quality so if i come back i'm just canceling this and i'm going back to the project settings if i go to the integration sorry prompt library here i can see multi faced audit and this is for the evaluate requirement quality if i go to end to end scenario this is for the test case requirements so based on this uh, Op, uh, we will be having the drop down in the requirements when we are generating the test cases so evaluate quality and i'm selecting this and click on next and i'll simply say multi phase audit relevance clarity and all i don't want to go with the security and performance as of now i want to go with only the functionalities what i want to look at like uh, the based on the requirement whether it is properly uh, given or not evaluate quality so now the autopilot is working on your a uh, requirement in order to evaluate its quality so it will take a time and we will get uh, the response back uh, or we will get the notifications and we can even close this also but uh, i'm just keeping it open in order for that to be completed even we can close this we will get a uh, notification once it is uh, done also under this notifications we will get that uh, notifications so i'm just uh, clearing all of my existing quality check is completed few seconds ago so now it is got completed so if we go here we can see this specify error handling clarify missing field behaviors and all these things so if we draw go to the drop down we can just simply click on add in case if we want to have it so it is saying that like system downtime and error issues and all these things so i don't want to go for it so we need to define it it will not even up give you the complete uh, things like we just need to uh, define it will help you out so that like uh, you can just simply defined based on this like uh, it is saying that like missing mandatory fields and it, we should specify error messages and all right so if i go down so these are the different uh, uh, we have in even we can even regenerate this also when we go for the regeneration again it will ask for the supporting documents right and also we can go for the suggest more sorry we can go to the quality enhancements we can even suggest more so that it will give us more and more by default it is giving 10 but we can just click on suggest more it will again it will go for that evaluation and it will give us the some more more details so now on top of this we, what we can do is we can just simply click on the generate test cases once we evaluated our requirements and once we updated all these details we just simply need to click on generate test cases and in terms of generate test cases i'm just considering this considering this and go to the next and select the prompt so what i want to test it so whether you want to go for a boundary value testing like minimum maximum or so end to end flow testing or valid end to end test scenario so i'll just select this and it is giving me the prompts even here also i can edit my prompt so i have selected this scenario uh, prompt library by default what is defined in the settings and by default it is coming here even i can modify this or update this and i can run this if just we need to remember that like even if we update it something here it will be only for that particular generation it will not be updated back into the prompt library now i'll just click on generate test cases
So we can close this panel as soon as it has got generated. So we will be getting it. So if you see here, like it is saying that synthesizing the test data, so even it will provide some test data also based on uh, whatever the information we have given. So if you see here, like we got all the details, uh, detailed steps, right? I'll just select all these and click on create test. If you see here by default, it is generating 10, but we can give the number how many we want to have. And why it is generating, we just write only one line. So if I go to this regenerate, I'll just want to download this, save and open this. See here it is very detailed uh, flow is given step by steps and acceptance criteria and everything. Either you can submit as a document or we can even update in the requirements. So either of these uh, we need to do. So that like uh, we will be getting it, uh, the test case is generated. So based on this, if you see here the user flow, so I'll show you uh, the difference of this requirement. So we have uh, this requirement and submit loan application, loan request, right? So here there is nothing uh, given in the description properly, just a single liner. And if you see here, here it is given the user flow acceptance criteria. If you come here, we have a user flow and acceptance criteria. And if you if you see for this particular requirement, it is in the quality enhancement, it is saying that all these are missing. So I'll go to the regenerate and I'll select this document and again, I'll click on next. Okay. Regenerate. And whatever the suggestions it is giving in order to fine tune our requirements, it's up to us whether to consider them or not. We can consider or we can reject it because it's all depends on what actually we need and it will suggest in case if we are missing something. And if you are sure that like you're not missing something, you can just uh, discard uh, whatever the suggestion it has given to us. Okay. And in the meanwhile, so we have already created some test cases for the create loan request, right? If I go here, if you see here, these are the manual test cases which are already got generated, the 10 uh, loans, loan requests, right? And I'm just closing this document. See, I'm just closing it because it's error. It's uh, not giving the error handling and all these things, right? So in case if you want to have like uh, put a try catch for handling the UI uh, latencies or something, right? So we can all uh, improve that uh, description and we can just have it close. We see it would be better in case if you have a more descriptive descriptions uh, requirements and also covering all the scenarios. Now I have already created a project like where I have the UiPath, UI Bank, um, UiPath Bank application already available for me with the proper naming conventions. And now I want, if I go to the test manager, test explorer, I just need to, okay, leave this. Uh, so we will see how these uh, test cases, whatever we have will be get reflected. So these many test cases are got created, approved standard loan, approved, uh, approved senior high income and all these details, right? So what we will do is we will connect this test manager if I go to the test managers till underscore test manager underscore is my URL. So I'm just copying it. Click on connect. And now it's got connected. Now I need to get 
Oh, sorry, it's not yet connected. Why it is not getting connected? URL is correct. You see. Generally, we'll give till underscore only, but let me see. Okay. Oops, I logged into a different tenant, so I'm just signing out and again I'll log in. I was connecting to a different tenant, so different uh, orchestrator. Let me see now. Okay, now I'll connect the test manager. Path to do. connect. Now it has got connected. So I want to take the project default project to be connected here. So generally, how it will go is like we can even connect the test cases and we can get the default project also. So we will see once if we are uh, having the default project ready. Once we connect this, click on OK. The default project is connected. And whatever the manual test cases we have, right? all those test cases got reflected here. If you see here, previously we have only these five. But now if you see, we have all these already got generated, reflected back. So let us go back here. Approve standard loan and all these things are got generated here. And if we go to the other requirement, let me come to the other requirement, submit loan. Here also we have submit high volume, submit high low volume and all, right? So if you see here, submit high volume, submit low volume. So we have all, uh, all the test cases got reflected back. Now our test, so what we covered is like, uh, we uh, covered the evaluation of the requirements and test case generation, test scenario generation, manual manual steps. And we connected our UiPath Studio to our test manager. And all these test cases, what are got generated by the autopilot, are got reflected back to our UiPath Studio. Now it's our pending is like we need to generate the test cases. If I right click on any of the test cases, if you see here, we can directly click on this in order to generate the test case but we will right click so that it will give us more and more options to this. So if you see here, there are three different uh, options we have available. One is directly generating the generative uh, coded test case uh, with the generative AI and we have create coded test case and create low code test case. So there are three options. So what we will do is for three test cases, we will use three of the options and we will see how it is working. And in case if I directly click on this create coded test case with Gen AI, it will directly generate my test case along with the code. So now it is generating the code in a C sharp language for us in order to, with the help of generative AI and autopilot. See here, all the whole entire code is got generated for me. And if you see here, object repository, it had taken all the object names from here only term, submit, if you see here, term, amount, and every object is properly identified and it has taken. So in case if you are having a meaningful and consistent naming convention for your object repository and similar things you have in your requirements, then this will help you to directly identify these details. Okay. And now if I go to another, sorry. So this is, where is the submit? So, the approve high income applicant is got created. This is approve high income applicant. Now I want to use the second option, create coded test case. What it will do is it will generate any code simply give me the comments or the steps whatever is required for this see here we already we got we just got all the steps now what we will do is we'll just select the entire uh, comments and we will right click on it and we will use generate code so it will be giving us the whatever we have selected and we will we can just need to re uh, review this and click on generate 
and even you can write some additional prompt also there so we can even customize our uh, comments and uh, to make the code uh, generation more and more uh, better we can even give the additional prompts if you uh, are thinking So it is now generating the code from the comments and we can and the prompts. See here. Now my code is got generated. Okay. If you see something, right? Like uh, if I go here, click on submit an application, and it is expected to have this message. So it is verifying that whether that message is coming or not. If I come here see here it is not giving me that it is just going to the click submit and it is not giving me the expected one so what i can do is i can just simply copy this and i can put it here and i can just select right side and generate generate in case if something is missing out we can va validate and we can generate the code again so it is not giving me the proper way of but the same code whatever we have and when we are selecting and we are just right clicking we are getting it so what i will do is i'll just directly select the entire right i'll select it now i'll just right click and generate the code Still, it is in autopilot, but still we need to do some additional work for us, right? So this is not working as expected for me. So I just need to go and now I just need to write my code for testing.verify expression. So why there is a difference when we are doing both of them? The same code lines or comments we have but there it is working and here it is not working right so we need to just use this also where is this ui bank so here we'll just simply take you okay so there is a slight difference we may have but i always prefer to go with first generate the comments and based from there i will be generating the code instead of directly generating it because i can validate my steps and based on that i can even give the additional prompts and get generated okay now there is a third option generate low code test case what it will do is now till now the code generation is happening on the c sharp but now it will create me a sequence but as of now we are getting in the comments and giving the steps but in the next release we are going to have a proper coded automation along with the browsers and all the activities placed so maybe uh, we can expect uh, in the next release so it will generate the entire coded or uh, low code automation uh, sequences as well with the help of autopilot so the drag and drop activities whatever we have that will be a uh, uh generated with the help of autopilot so this is how the autopilot code generation will work and help us okay now let me go to the insights so we can uh, publish these or we can execute this in order to see that i'm not doing because uh, by considering the time so if we, we can go to the test results and in order to see the insights so let us, if you see here, we have uh, for each of the test case, we have uh, six test cases executed and few are got passed and one is got failed. And if we go to the other test results, we have all the, all the test cases got passed. So we have some different variation of test execution results here. And I'll be selecting to show more than 10. 
and if you see i have a total 17 test set executions these test set executions happen for 17 times and each of the results and few of them are 100% successful and few are like got failed with one or two or three test cases so some test cases are got failed and some test cases are got successful and when it comes to all the test sets everything is um, the same test cases right so if i go here i cannot go to each and everything and i cannot say that like this third test case is got failed and i'm coming back and if i go here all these are passed and if i come here there is one test case two test cases six and uh, three are got failed so we need to look uh, look into each and every uh, test set execution in order to identify or again we need to go to the test cases and see how many executions are happen right so if i just increase this to more number so if you see here like we have all these like this but this test case one it is saying that it has got failed and the rest everything is got passed right so if i come here this has got failed in the latest one but before that everything is got passed and if i come back and we have a uh, the test case 3 right i'm just increasing the numbers so if you, if i go to the test case 3 if you see here it is got failed one time also so we are not pretty sure about in what scenarios it is getting failed and all these things in going to each and every test case and test set and identifying which test case is got failed and what might be the reason and all so it will be very hard so what we will do is we'll just directly select all these test set executions and we'll click on generate insights from the selections now it is analyzing the test results in the background with the help of gen ai capabilities and as soon as the test insights are ready we will get a notification here that like test uh, insights are ready right i'm just refreshing this page So it will take for some time uh, in order to analyze the requirements and give us the clear picture of uh, the patterns which is getting successful and which are getting failed. So I'm refreshing. It will take uh, a while in order to get the details uh, available. So as soon as it is done, we will be getting the notification here. And meanwhile, like if you have any questions, guys, uh, please uh, feel free to post on the chat so that I'll be taking up those questions. I think one thing I missed out, like uh, in terms of test data generation, right? If I go to this, I don't have anything. Here we have a hard coded values, right? So let us assume that like we have this mid uh, is loan and all. So if I'm having a um, name, email street address sorry not street address age income loan requested amount and this i'll change it to double to double and income also to double is to integer right and if i go to this approve mid days loan this one if i click add test data and from here we can set the source and i'm just going with autogen Oops, there is a mistake which I have done. Oops. Why it is saying that like there is no arguments. So it's taking some time in order to get the things not to work so create test case create okay now i will go to the test case 
right click add test data auto generate so now we got that so it will generate all these details you can go to the regenerate so it will automatically generate test data and how many test data you want to have so you can just simply select regenerate yes so with this uh, we can generate this test data with the help of autopilot capabilities and let me go back to my test manager and refresh this if you see here 10 notifications are there which means my test report is ready if i go here see here it is giving me a clear picture of what actually happening right top failing test cases third test case is got failed eight times out of 17 executions and the six is got five out of 17 and two out of two times out of 17 test executions and most common errors what is happening is fail for the text in the success field so whatever the quotation screen we are having right so it is not getting that and um, so we have uh, each and every detail of so if i can just click on show it is so showing me like uh, where it is got failed and you can i can just simply go to open test execution and third one i can simply go to open test case from here open test execution log so here it is got failed so this message is not this one so because of that it is getting failed so in case if it is an expected behavior but the data we have provided is should be right because the scenario is to that should be successful but it is not giving me that success so that's the reason for which it is which it has got failed so if i go to the insights it also gives me a recommendation because it is thinking that like because of the time uh, it is taking in order to load the target page or success message to come is getting delayed. So because of that, it is thinking that like it is getting failed. So it is asking to adjust the time so that like it will work uh, as expected. So correct the success message. Uh, let us assume that like uh, you might have given a wrong input success message or something got changed on the target application so we need to change according to that like it is that's what actually it is expecting based on the failure scenarios because all the failures might be having for a specific test case at success message comparison itself so there is a possibility of it <clears throat> this is for the third one so you'll be getting the test okay uh test case number also right like uh, where it is getting failed you uh, this is for the th third test case, sixth test case, and second test case. So we have all the detailed information about the failure rate and success rate, and uh, what might be the common errors. And if you see the patterns, UI errors are more when it compared to the others. And seven out of 16 is similar to the UI errors, which is at the validation place. This UI errors can be at any point of time, like while it is navigating or updating the information. But the validation errors are like once you submit the form at the end, whatever the message you are getting. So based on that, this validation errors will be uh, considered. So these are the different types of errors and what are the recommendations it is suggesting for us in terms of test case failures. And this is the insights uh, which is getting generated with the help of capabilities of Gen AI and considering uh, our test execution results. And we can select any number of results. Like if I want to go for only two, I can simply go for it and also I can uh, go for based on last one day or seven days or 30 days the maximum up to 30 days we can generate this test insights so this is all about the uh, test insights and we can even download this download open the same uh, you will be getting your you are not going to get any fancy details or something but uh, when you're seeing here you can just click on show more you will be getting all this so that it is actually uh, uh, sending us so you can just click on show more show more so you'll be getting all these details right like that we are getting in a word document so this is all about the gen ai capabilities for the test result analysis and insights yep uh, now uh, we are open for the questions if anyone have any questions please do post on the chat so that i'll be taking it up
Okay, let me do one thing. I'll be giving uh, an option to enable your mic so that you can just uh, simply ask me the questions in case if you want to have anything. So now I'm just may, uh, allowing you guys to unmute yourself. So please do ask if you have anything. I hope I have given access to everyone. So please do let me know if you have any questions on this. Hi, Patrul. Myself is Jayant. Hi, Jayant. Yeah. Uh, so for the auto, uh, when we are using autopilot for the creation of the test, uh, test cases, so we have the test set actually. In the test set, we are maintaining minimum of uh, a number of, of test cases, right? So when mm -hmm. we're going to publish it, in case we got any firewall issues, errors, uh, there is an autopilot will be help you out uh, to any give the solutions on that. Uh, so you are saying that like you already have your test set and test cases already ready and you're yes. publishing it. And at that place, you are getting some issues like when you are publishing. Yes. See, uh, publishing is uh, not a part of autopilot, right? Like autopilot is more of like helping you in terms of test case, like in, it's, it's kind of a design and development of the test cases it is giving you and also analyzing your results. But it's publishing is something that like, which we generally do it manually. So when you're trying to publish from UiPath Studio, right? In case if you are having any such issues uh, on that, you will be getting the error message there itself, right? Uh, yes, Patrudu, but my in my in, in my case, so mm -hmm. I already published a very long time. For last five months, I'm uh, upgrading every every day for the versions controlling. I'm doing mm -hmm. the version control on that. So I believe like the autopilot will help me out my version control. If case uh, this version has some issues, the autopilot will be suggest to me like uh, or give any insight for, for me to use uh, other versions in case the, the, the parameters not matching up. It's a nice uh, thought, but uh, we don't have that capability as of now, but it's a nice one to consider. But uh, we need to see in terms of, uh, so you mean to say that like you have multiple versions already published and yeah. uh, based on the previous uh, test execution results, it should at least recommend you that like, see with this particular version, it worked and now it is not working and all these things, right? That's what your yeah. expectations. Yes, yes. Yes, it's, yes. A, it's a nice one to consider, I think. Uh, but as of now, we don't have that such a capabilities. It is giving us based on purely based on the test results and it is not considering the versions as of now. OK, okay. thank yeah. you. Thank it's you. a nice one. Uh, what you can do is uh, see whenever you think that like something might not be available, it's good to have. Right. So you can simply go to the forum.uipath.com or even on the orchestra, like in the test manager also. Right. Like. Uh, uh let me share my screen again we have multiple places uh in order to share our feedback okay so insider dot dot uipath.com where you can sign up for this and once you got signed up, so it should be your uh, e uh, of official email ID. It will not work with your Google or a Gmail. OK. And yeah. here you can uh, submit your uh, uh, suggestions, whatever you want to give uh, the feedback. Right. So you can just simply submit there that like uh, in case if it is good to have in case if we have such a feature or something. So based on that, it, they will consider. Uh, and if you go to the forum also and UI but forum also, you can we have the category of feedbacks. Yeah, here it is a feedback, right? So you can go to the test manager. The test suite, test suite. Yeah, test suite. And here you can just simply click on new topic and you can write your feedback, uh, like uh, for uh, whatever the future you are expecting. And in case if it is uh, viable to implement and good it is most in case if it is a valid really a valid enhancement they will consider it 
or else they will respond back to you also what might be the uh, reason why they are not considering or something so you will get all this um, in, in, insights or information from them and you can even submit that okay uh, thank you for the information thank you yeah. thanks anyone have any questions if not we will wrap up the session thanks everyone thank you for your time and uh, we'll see you in the next session so we have like please follow the ui path vishakhapatnam community chapter so next month we are having more uh, sessions on ui path studio web and ui path apps please do register for that as well thank you